I've got a very special guest joining me. He was originally planned to be the very first guy, and then we had tons of technical difficulties I discussed, and then he went out to Europe, got enjoyed that for a little bit. But finally, we get to have on the very first guy that's been a part of every single chapter of my short but still five-year career. He's done it from the audio versions. He's been on the IG Lives. He did commitment stuff. We've had him now on at this point, the very first person that's done all levels of it for the show. And you guys probably know him as one of the best players in all the country. He's going to be an NBA player in about 365 days or so, most likely. So he's a great player. But besides that, he's also one of the best people in all college basketball. He's a great guy, a humble guy, one of the most humble athletes you'll meet. And that's Duran Holmes II. So with that being said, I'm excited to be welcome on Duran Holmes. Duran, how are you doing today, man? Pretty well. How are you? I appreciate you a lot. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you as well. So I mentioned in the intro, you just got back from a European trip where you guys got to go to Barcelona and Paris. You got to take us through that a little bit. Yeah, so that was amazing, man. So um, we had the opportunity to go out and see different sceneries and uh, compete over there. So it was like a great team bonding experience. You know, we got to play against some good teams and then we got to try new food and see new culture. So it was fun overall. That was your, probably your first time in Europe, I'm guessing, right? My first time in Europe, yeah. So what would you say was your favorite aspect, and was there any part that you'd say was something you did not necessarily enjoy? My favorite aspect, I would just say, is seeing the scenery. Uh, I would personally like Spain a lot. Um, in cooking with the team, we cooked paella. That was amazing. Um, personally, also, like what I didn't enjoy, uh, I don't really know if there's anything I didn't enjoy. Uh, I really don't know. Everything was fun. Well, this team has some guys returning. Obviously, Malachi is their guy you've played a few couple years with now. He's a great player. Both the Kobe's are back as well. But there's still a lot of changes going on this team. Obviously, Tamani, a great <laughs> player, is now in the NBA. Mike transferred out a few other things that have occurred. You guys brought in new guys. Just to get in the core, I know not everybody was playing yet, but just to kind of get a sense of a feel playing with these guys, what's your thoughts on the team so far? How much were you enjoying just playing with these guys now? The team is doing very well right now. You know, it's mm -hmm. a whole new look for the most part, besides a couple of us returners. Malachi and Kobe are getting back pretty soon. Um, they're both looking good in their progression. But for the most part, the team's looking very solid. Um, I like the team a lot. I think we get along very well. Our team chemistry has gone up through the roof. So we're going to be surprising a lot of heads this year. Now, I've, when I was researching some extra stuff, I didn't necessarily know this nickname until a little bit ago, but you are nicknamed Deuce. Can you take us to that nickname a little bit? Like, where did that start? How'd you get that nickname? So I first had that when I was like a little kid when I was in Tennessee before I moved to Arizona. When I moved, <laughs> nobody in Arizona called me that. So um, it's just when I came out here to Dayton, in Ohio, uh, my dad had told the coaches that was my original nickname. So mm. it got around campus, and that's what I'm called around here. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, I want to get into your career because the last time that you were on the show was right before you commit. And obviously, then I released after you announced your commitment. But you went to Dane, and now you're a couple years into this journey now. Take us through this a little bit now. When you reflect back on your time at Dane, has it been everything you were expecting that you wanted? Would you say it's been a successful tenure so far? Or what's kind of your thoughts on your career so far, Dane? Honestly, it's been amazing. Um, mm -hmm. We have a great coaching. Um, we have great athletes here in the student body here. Is, they always come to support all the games. You know, so the development piece has been amazing. I feel like I've grown as a player and I've evolved my game and just seeing my teammates as well, like evolve as well. So I think all those things combined, it's been um, exactly what I was told when I was getting recruited there. And I really like, I really enjoy it a lot here. So I want to go into your freshman year a little bit. Your first year out there, you came out and, and you were a top recruit coming in. A lot of people knew you, a lot of people were excited for you, and you didn't disappoint. You broke the Dane record for blocks in your freshman season with 81. Walk us through that first year at Dane a little bit. That first year was, it was a lot of adversity, but um, we ended up finishing out pretty strong, you know, so um, it was me, Mally, Lynn, and Caleb originally. Um, Lynn ended up transferring. Um, mm -hmm. These are all the freshmen that came in, and like, it's a whole new team as well, so you know, coach kind of just threw us in the fire with the game. So the games came, we're literally playing a lot of minutes as freshmen, you know, mm -hmm. so our first couple of games, we got smacked pretty, pretty, uh, pretty hard. So we played Lipscomb. I remember they torched us pretty, pretty badly. Um, but then we picked it up when we went to that tournament in Orlando and beat Kansas um, off the buzzer beater. My friend stopped and hit it. So um, after that, we just grew as a team. Tamani did a great job of leading us and showing us how things are supposed to be done, you know, and ever since then, we've been following the same morals. 
So let's get into Tamani a little bit because he was a great player. You two were a dynamic duo down low. He's now where you've lived for a long time now. He's out in the Valley. So just based on that right there, what's the biggest advice, the biggest helpful point you could give to Monty right now as he gets adjusted to living in your original, your home state that you grew up in? Oh, I just told him to stay away from outside if it's the sun. <laughs> I told him not to be outside too long because it's very hot. And that's the first thing you told me when you went down there. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very cool to see him down there. He's going to enjoy it a lot and he's going to do very good down there as well. So I'm very happy for him. We're all excited for him. So I was like playing with him because you two really were a dynamic duo in the A-10. You guys were doing your thing for quite some time. What would you say was, what was it like just playing alongside him? It was great. You know, he did all the things that nobody else wanted to really do on the court. So mm. he did all the little things at an elite level. Now, sometimes it can go unnoticed because it's a requirement. And he just did it so great that like sometimes people didn't really see it. And he has an all-around game. So all those mm. things combined, like he's just a good, very good, very elite all-around player like playing with him was very eye-opening because there was sometimes I'm we're all in the court like wow he's just you know he's doing it all so that was great to be able to play with him when you talk about his game he's going to the Phoenix Suns obviously a contender for the first time in quite some time obviously now they had the expectation to potentially win a championship what are the Suns what can they expect from him as he goes in there as a rookie in the NBA what should the Suns and the NBA be able to expect from Chimani they're going to um, I think they can already see it, but they're going to mm -hmm. um, have a great defender. You know, he is a lead on defense. He'll guard any position. You know, um, he's very versatile. You know, he's got an outside game now, and he's very uh, aggressive, and he knows how to use his body. So he's a very physical athlete, um, great defender, and great shooter. So they're going to see that at first, and then it's just going to skyrocket from there. All right, so I've got to get into your NBA draft process because it was a unique – time span or that probably from what march mid-march whatever to mm -hmm. june there was a lot of stuff and i know you like to keep things a little bit quiet so not a lot of people obviously knew about some of the stuff going on at that point in time but i was trying to stay off of social media a little bit when i was kind of getting ready getting ready to the show to get going and all that but i'd usually check in especially during the transfer portal time about a couple times a week whatnot and there was one time i know that i logged in and duran was trending on twitter and i was like okay well that is this the duran the guy that i know or is this another guy and it was you and obviously there was all kinds of let's just say blue bloods out there that fan bases that were obviously wanting to run homes and you weren't in the portal yet or anything like that but you got to walk us through that a little bit like you in your inner circle you guys just talking with your family and whoever it might be when you were hearing those rumors was, was that ever something you were considering like did you ever look at potentially going to the portal testing that out because i know any school probably would want you if you obviously went in the portal but did that ever cross your mind or just what was going through your mind during those couple of months it was a lot going through my mind during those couple of months. Like I really didn't even know like that I would see some stuff on out on uh, social media, and I I didn't even know about it. So um, I don't really know fully too much about all the stuff that was going on, but um, it was just eye opening. Honestly, it was just a lot. So when you log in, you see your name trending, and you see all these fan bases saying, "Oh, we're going to go after Deron Holmes." And at this point, you're going through the NBA draft process, and you're still a day in. Like, what just goes through your mind at those points and times? Yeah, like at that time, I was like, I'm at, when I was in the draft, I was focused on you know what I need to learn throughout mm -hmm. that process and what I need to, you know, listen to to get better. You know, mm -hmm. um, that was hope, my whole focus at the time. So, you know, um, I just knew Dayton's home. You know, this yeah. is a home uh, for me, and um, I just love it here. And I trust the coaching staff and the players here, and they do a great job of building character and building the right type of players. So. I really couldn't ask for anything else. You obviously know your situation better than anyone else does. And from my perspective, I obviously had you guy as a guy that could have been drafted this year. You decided to come back to Dayton, though. So walk us through that decision. Like, was that something that you knew that you probably would have been drafted had you stayed in the draft and you just wanted to either rise your star, wanted to come back to Dayton for a year? Or what led to that ultimate decision of saying, you know what, I'm going to come back to Dayton and run it back one more time at least? Well, honestly, you know, like the good thing is that, like, I've had – Coaches, uh, I have I have a coach that, and some coaches that have um, been uh, in that level of the NBA. So they'll honestly give me honest feedback. And then I also heard honest feedback. Yeah, I felt like I could have possibly got drafted um, somewhere in the second round, probably late. But mm -hmm. I feel like staying one more year can help benefit me and show my full value to uh, teams, like show what I can really do. So, and the great thing is I have coaches here that are going to, you know, 
help showcase that and my teammates are going to help me out with everything as well so it's a good mixture of every all that type of stuff that made help me decide to come back later into the season and more so i guess like early portal season time around march just what march whatever early april coach anthony grant there was some rumors obviously that he might step away retire whatever it might be he obviously just has to come back at least for another year now how big was that for you just to know that okay i have coach grant coming back he's gonna be my coach if i return at that point in time how big was that for you so it was funny uh, that you actually said that because like like i was saying earlier how i didn't really know too much about the stuff on social media it was the same with him like we didn't know that uh he well he told us like i asked him like coach are you you leaving and he told me he was like i don't even i didn't know i was leaving like i didn't know what was going on and, like he didn't even know what was going on e either so it was kind of like you know he knew he was coming back so it, mm. i wasn't too focused on him uh leaving i knew he wasn't leaving. So basically you're saying that there's just some people out there making stuff up and you were always going to come back to Dane and Coach Anthony Grant was always going to come back to Dane for this next year at least? Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't know where <laughs> this stuff comes from, but that's just how it is, you know. Now I know last season had to be an up and down year because when we talk about you guys, you guys head into the season of the top 25 ranked team, a lot of expectations for you guys. And ultimately it was one of those situations where I know a lot of people would say probably was a disappointing year and it probably was a little bit, but there's – and I know not a lot of athletes like using excuses, but at the same time, injuries were present on that team last year. You guys had Malachi who missed the majority of the season. Kobe missed a lot of the year. Lots of ups and downs. Can you take us through that a little bit? What was last season like dealing with the ups and downs of injuries, kind of just trying to battle through one game having this guy, one guy not having this guy, just the ups and downs of last year? Yeah, it definitely wasn't easy um, because most of our injured players were all of our guards for the most part. So um, we were very shorthanded. So we had mm -hmm. to you know, slow down a lot of things. So it was a lot different. It was a new uh, form of adversity that, to look at. Um, but we ended up figuring um, it out for the most part. You know, mm -hmm. um, it was just it was very different, if I could explain it like that, just a shift uh, with all the injuries we had. At one point, we had, I think, the tallest lineup in the nation all around yeah. um, <laughs> from point guard to to um, to center. So. It was very funny, but I enjoyed it. It was it was fun. It was fun. Like, but I'm glad everybody's back now. Honestly, mm -hmm. um, we're better always at full strength. So it just kind of was a bummer that we had injuries last year, especially the key pieces that were injured. So um, now, hopefully this year, I'm praying that we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> So I've just got to ask, though, when you are in the situation and you're trying to go through a season, be positive, win games, and you know that, okay, you're having this tall lineup. You might not have a true point guard in the lineup that can help you get the ball. Because obviously, I, for you and Tamani especially, having guards are pretty critical to get you guys involved and get you in the right position and places. How do you stay positive throughout the course of a season like that? You just got to look at the positive. You know, um, mm -hmm. like, for instance, last year, we still had a, a – a, every it's like the next man up mentality. So we sure. still had guys that were willing to step up and embrace their new role, you know. So mm -hmm. if it comes to a point where somebody that's not used to playing a certain position has to step up and do it, they should know what to do. You know, if you pay attention in practice and you listen to the little details, then you should know what to do. So it's always next man up. So that's our focus and that's our mental towards that type of stuff. Now, I just got to ask you, though, I mean, if – we never will know the answer to this, but let's say you guys didn't have injuries, at least any major inj injuries like you guys had last year, and you guys had the full-on lineup of everyone playing. Do you guys think you guys could have made a deep tournament run, or how good do you think that team could oh. have been? Oh, yeah, for sure. I think we would have – I'm not going to say easily, uh, but I, confidently I really think we would have made a deep tournament run just mm -hmm. because, like, when you have a full roster, full strength, like, and you have, like, an injury, it can mess up, like, a lot of things it's yeah. not just the fact that they're out the you know game it changes so much the, tra the trajectory of the whole team so um i definitely do and you know i think that we're going to be great this year especially because uh all of our guys are going to be healthy i'm just mm -hmm. putting it out there i feel like where all of our guys are going to be in a good spot so we'll be perfectly fine <laughs> So for you this upcoming season, you head into the year as someone that I believe will be an All-American type player this year, potentially first, might be the best player. I mean, you might be the best, at least, player prospect. I know college NBA games are a lot different because we'll have some guys that just dominate the college type of game and, and might not pan on the NBA-wise. You're a guy that I think is one of those guys that have a chance of not only dominating the college game but also being a true legitimate NBA prospect as well. So you head into this season. I've already seen some guy. I think Dick Vitale made his preseason All-American year on that. I'm sure there's others as well. 
do you feel that there's a sense of a little bit more pressure, more attention spotlight on you now as you head into this year as a guy that most regards one of the best players in the country? Um, you know, there's always a pressure out there, but, you know, now that it's my third year and um, I'm more used to things and, you know, I'm more like a veteran now. Um, mm -hmm. I understand what's happening now. It's, I think they call it consciously competent. Like I yeah. know what I'm supposed to do. So it's just about executing it and literally just doing it. So um, I appreciate it a lot. So, yeah, my goal is to just focus day by day and get better day by day. And it's always a blessing to be on those lists, you know, because mm -hmm. it shows the hard work I put in the past. But my whole motto is just to keep moving forward, you know, and um, we got to win games. So it definitely is pressure. Um, it's not easy. The task isn't easy, but the main thing is to just keep going forward and do what you do, you know. So what's your mindset going in? I mean, I know most athletes always say, you know, I'm the best player on the court. I always have, you have to have that mindset to compete. For you, though, when you know that not only do you probably think that you're the best player on the court when you step on, but also the coaches and game plan is going to be set against you knowing that you are one of the best players. How do you take that on? Like when you step on the court, how do you take on the role knowing that people are going to game plan for you, people plan to play against you and knowing that you are one of not the best players? Yeah, so like my coach would tell me, all that stuff, that's just expected. You know, that's yeah. what's expected. So it's like a requirement, you know, um, it's a requirement that I have to go out there and um, do what I do every game. And, you know, I should be able to expect certain teams are going to come with some type of game plan, uh, whether it's against me, one of my teammates. But I'm pretty sure for the most part, I'm going to see certain things against different teams. So, you know, it's just expected, you know, what's that? So one of the guys that we talked a lot about when you originally commit today and was obviously Obi Toppin. He was one of the best players, one of the best player in day in history, had a great career, became a top five pick. And that was a guy that at that point in time when you were committing, going through the recruiting process, was appealing. And you talked about that when we did our other interview. Now that you head into this special year three, knowing that you have a chance to possibly break some Obi records, you have a chance to be up there when become one of not the best players in day in history. What is that like to see the way that Coach Grant's developed you and potentially taking on this role, becoming one of not the best players in day in history now? It's all in the details, you know, um, like they did with Obi. They um, he went through a very similar situation. He locked in, he listened, he bought in and mm. he is where he is today. You know, not only because of himself, but because of his guidance that he had while he was here at university, you know, and. Um, the role models that were in front of him, like Coach Grant and all the other coaches that we have. So my goal is to follow the same footsteps and um, just show, like, the culture that's here, you know, and help build so then whoever comes through next, you know, um, goes through the same, you know, steps. So um, mm -hmm. that's my whole goal is to just, you know, just be a doer, somebody who's going to go out there and execute and do it, you know. <laughs> So do you have any type of relationship with Obi? Has he come back to the program at times? Have you been able to work out with him some? Or what's your guys' relationship like if you guys have one? We do. Yeah, I talk to him every now and then. Uh, I've okay. seen him. He comes down to Dayton every now and then to check back in and everything with the team, and he'll give everybody pointers and stuff. So he's a very cool person. So uh, it's great to see him when I do. What would you say is the biggest piece of advice that he's given you that throughout your time talking with him? Um, he kind of told me, like, what Coach Grant said, like, uh, when you're out there on the court, you have to know certain things are expected from you, you know, and that's just a requirement. That's the baseline level. So you have to make sure you're just doing this, that it shouldn't be like a question, you know, you have to dominate. So that was probably the best advice he's gave me. I want to go in a little bit deeper into Coach Grant because he is a great coach. He's one of the more respected just men in college basketball as well. Take us through your guys' relationship a little bit. Um, Very good. And he has a great relationship with all of his players. You know, he's a – uh, players coach he's always going to be there for his players if there's something mentally going wrong or anything like that you can always go and talk to him about anything you know that's a, mm -hmm. I think one of the greatest qualities not only with Coach Grant but with the rest of our coaching staff and Coach Grant's very humble you know and very wise so you can learn a lot from him in just like two seconds so yeah he's a great person so what's the biggest thing you've learned from him then <laughs> you're probably not going to get this but he just some he'll tell me to just look in the mirror and then mm. It, it, it's it's an insight. He's good though. He's uh, I've learned a lot. He's gave me books to read and everything. So, um, yeah, yeah. But my biggest thing I've learned is he told me to like look in the mirror. You know, so. I was gonna say there's a little bit of backstory behind that. What's that then? Yeah. So I. <laughs> he's like, who who are you gonna be? It's basically like who who are you choosing to be? You know. So like, look at yourself like. 
who are you choosing to be? Like, who are you? You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So it's like a confident thing. Like, um, he's just trying to help me, you know, understand like what I can become, you know, and uh, to use my uh, God-given uh, abilities to the greatest I can. <laughs> NIL has had a big impact on college basketball, and you've been able to embrace a lot of them. We see different posts from you. We've got the Range Rover picture you've posted. you got the least Famous, Recipe Chicken, H&R Block. You've got all these different NIL aspects. What's it been like just being able to embrace this new college scheme with all the different NIL opportunities you now have? It's a blessing, honestly, because, like, there's, like, so many different, like, NILs, but only some, like, um, NILs, like – I don't do all the deals that like are offered, honestly. Mm. Um, but for the most part, I like the ones that have a purpose behind them. Which, like, one of them that I'm doing right now is called Learn to Earn, and it's helping out, you know, kids uh, with academics uh, and helping them like get their minds right, you know. And I love the ones like, for instance, the car deal I have, and mm-hmm. it just shows like if you're gonna work hard, um, you know, then you could end up doing this. So my whole goal is to show that hey, like, you know. We have people in the community that are here to support the basketball team, whether it's like Lee's Chicken or the car or Learn to Earn. There's so many more I can go down the line with. You know, so that's the whole goal I'm trying to put out with NIL. It's not really fully just about the money part. Um, mm-hmm. It's more about representing the businesses and being a good role model for the uh, kids looking up to. So you said you haven't taken all of them then. So what is the criteria for someone to land Deron Holmes as an NIL partner? What are you looking for? Like it, you know, for the most part, it is just, it doesn't have to be something like quick cash. I'm not too mm-hmm. much concerned about, you know, just quick cash. You know, it's, it's more about like, Hey, like, you know, if it's a, some, some of them are like, Hey, it's your image going out there. So it's like, I'm putting my face out there to represent a restaurant. I like the, I like those a lot, you know, mm-hmm. um, to show that, you know, uh, our teams represent or I'm representing the restaurant, not our team, my bad. Or like, for instance, with the car, you know, showing that, hey, like um, for recruits looking in, you know, if you work hard and you do what you're supposed to do, you know, um, we have people in the community giving you, you know, be able to um, work work that out with you. Or like I have one with this group called Condor Kids Academy, you know, and um, the whole goal is to help kids in need and help kids that um, don't have uh, what every other kid had growing up and show Mm -hmm. them, you know, hey, like you guys are going to be okay, like work hard every day. So that's my whole model with all that type of stuff. That's huge because I know a lot of guys would probably take the quick cash route, as you mentioned, but what's led you to say, and I'm not too surprised knowing you, but what has led you to say, you know what, it's not just about the money. I'm not just going to go take this deal because they're going to offer me this amount of money as quickly. What is about you kind of said, you know what, I just wanted to go for, go for things that I can represent that have a good stance in, in this world, that have something that's going to make an impact. Like right. what's made you kind of have the mentality of saying, you know, I'm not just going to go for the money it's going to be something that has a bigger purpose than just that. Right. Um, honestly, it's just how I was raised. And that's just yeah. how, you know, uh, my family is. And that's how, like, I, I just look at it, you know. And there are some where, you know, it's, um, like, you know, uh, like, quick. There have been some like that. But for the most part, I'm, that's not really what I've always been looking for. You know, it's mainly to, you know, show, hey, like, me go to the restaurant and see community of uh, people from the community in there and, show them, hey, I support this restaurant or like, you know, like I was saying with the kids in need or, you know, with the car and um, like showing people in the community off like the, uh, the car and everything. So it's all about that type of stuff for me. Well, I want to get into your family a little bit, especially Cam, because now he's kind of in a situation of where I first got to know you at. He's going into his high school career and he's been in there and now he's the top 26 ranked, top 25 ranked player. I think he's number 23 on ESPN. I know it's still early on the process for him, but he's coming up now and he's becoming the next Holmes name that's becoming big in the state of Arizona and the country now. What's like seeing him grow into who he's become? It's crazy. He gets taller every time I go back and see him, but um, he's a great player. He works very hard, so it's always great to see him, honestly. So when you talk about you two now, you go back to the time where he's at now in his high school career. Which one of you two do you think is better? Well, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I honestly think... I, I'll break it down like this. Mm-hmm. I think offensively he would get me. I think mm. the game is evolving. Kids are getting better at a younger age. Right now we could go and we're seeing kindergartners go in between the legs, dunking the ball now. So <laughs> the game's just changing, evolving. That's just how it is. I think I had him on the defensive end, but mm-hmm. I think he, he probably would have got me on the offensive end. Though. So I think it would even out a little bit. He might not say the same thing, but <laughs> that's what I think for right now. 
All right, but now you do have an age difference of quite a couple years now. So I'm sure you guys have had to play some one-on-one games. I know you are just uh, back yeah, out in he, Arizona a little bit ago. Man. How did he those go? Uh, we haven't played one-on-one really. He's he wouldn't get. He's not gonna. He's not caught up to me yet. Not yet. <laughs> he's got a couple more years <laughs> when he gets older. <laughs> All right. So what if you guys go and play one-on-one? What's the score going to be if you guys are going to eleven? I don't know. I'm competitive, so I'm gonna try not to let him score at all. <laughs> I'll give him. I'm gonna give him four. I'm gonna say eleven to four. That's probably how it ended up. Now I was trying to do the math, and I know you got the COVID year and whatnot, but ultimately you have the NBA dreams too. So I don't think it even would work out anyways to play in college together. So your best chance would be to play in the NBA, and and I know that's something yeah. that you're likely gonna have the opportunity to do. Sure. Can still obviously many years out, but yeah. obviously at this point in time, he is one of the top players in his class. What would it be like if that day ever came where you guys got to play with each other on an NBA court? Would that be with each other or against each other? That that'd be amazing, honestly. Mm-hmm. That'd be that'd be that'd be a big thing, big deal for our family, big deal for the Arizona community. So um, that's definitely one of the I think family goals we have is to be able to do that and get that out there. So he's going to be able to start getting recruited, I think, in a year or so now, and I'm sure there has to be some option that Dane would probably be interested in him to some extent. Yes. And so you're going to be an alumni or at least a current player, whatever it might be at that point. How do you balance difference between saying, you know, I want the best place for Cam and maybe that is Dane, but we don't know obviously yet, but either him choosing the right place, but also you saying, you know, well, I would like you to continue my legacy a little bit here and let's create the Holmes name out here at Dane. Right. Yeah. I, I'm definitely going to push for him to go to Dane. You know, <laughs> I know everybody, you know, how people are like, Hey, well, we'll do what's best for him and all that. I think this is best for him. I'm just doing it right. <laughs> I want him here, but you know, Honestly, wherever he ends up, I'm going to support him because that's my brother, you know. So, mm-hmm. um, But, you know, I, I love him, and um, I, he's going to be great regardless of wherever he ends up. I, I definitely am going to push for him to come out here on an official visit and everything, and I mm-hmm. think he'll really love it out here. So. All right, so we're going to go all the way back now. And I was reading a story about how you originally fell in love with basketball. I did not know this until I found this, but apparently your mom was coaching, I believe, in the YMCA when you were really little. Take us that a little bit. Like, what, what caused your love for basketball, and how did that start? Um, honestly, like you were saying, my mom started coaching me at a very young age uh, in the YMCA leagues. I was just running around like a chicken with my head cut off, spraying and shooting the ball, you know. So that was very fun. When I went to, went to middle school, just um, we had like when I was in Nashville, it was fifth through eighth grade. So uh, I got to see like I was a fifth grader getting to see like how all the other guys play. And it was just always competitive. I was the manager my fifth and sixth grade year. Um, then I moved to Arizona after that. So, and then that's when I just really fell in love with it. So when did you feel that it clicked for you that, that you're a guy that not only is going to be at, well, maybe it was in high school that you're a top guy in high school or maybe a college or you could be an NBA player. When did you feel that, okay, I know this is something that I'm going to make my career off of. I can go to the NBA or at least play professionally. When did that first start settling into your mind? I would say later years in high school. So probably like around my sophomore to junior year, I felt like, Hey, I actually got a chance at this and. Yeah. Luckily, like, you know, my friend Wyatt Bell back in Arizona, he introduced me to Von Compton. Um, mm-hmm. He really helped me with my early childhood development in basketball you know, and skills and everything. So uh, shout out to him to start out. And then I met my high school coach who taught me hard work and everything. And you know, he brought me that brought me such a long way. And now I'm here and I'm learning the mental part of the game. So I think all those things put together is going to really help me out. You just mentioned the mental part of the game, and that is a huge aspect, probably, possibly even more than some people would say than the actual skill aspect, just to have that mentality aspect. How have you grown mentally? How, how have you grown through your college career in that aspect? Really just reading the game. Um, mm. In terms of on the court, yeah, I would say reading the game, understanding what to do and what not to do um, in certain situations, you know, um, how to guard certain people, how to score on certain people. And then, you know, um, just being able to stay locked in every day. Um, with the choices I make off the court, you know, that's part, that's part of your mental as well, you know, so whether it's making sure I wake up one time um, or like eat at this time, eat at this time, you know, do this at a certain time. So everything's just like, you know, um, mentally, like trying to be stable every, with everything. So I know that you and I have talked about it before, but in terms of on the show, we haven't gotten into it. And that's the fact that when you were in high school, your senior year, when we did our interview, you were at Montverde at that point in time. And you obviously went with them for a little bit. And then you made the move out to back to Arizona, play with AZ Compass. And there was a little bit of an interesting, to say the least, story that ended up occurring. Because this Compass team with you, Tata Washington, great team, went out to Geico. You weren't allowed to end up playing in that. So can you take us to that a little bit? Like, what all exactly ended up happening at that point in time? 
Yeah, so um, I they said it's because I transferred after the certain deadline, and the whole mm-hmm. stir up was because I heard a couple of years before that they had a player that did play after the deadline when he did transfer. Um, but the whole committee of the um, Geico, uh, the guy who runs it, I think is uh, uh, I think they call it the headmaster or something like that mm-hmm. of Montverde. So they're obviously not going to let me play. You know, that's just, they're not, they're definitely not. And I, I know I wasn't supposed to, uh, apparently, but yeah. um, that's just how that went. So, you know, I felt like if I would have played in that game, we would have won. But, you know, it's no hard feelings. Just got to move on from it. It was a great experience. You know, we still got a chance to play them before that um, down in Montverde, and we lost in overtime. So I, that's why I was really feeling like that. If we they let me play in Geico, we would have won. So yeah. it's sad that it ended out like that, but, you know, Things happen for a reason. All right, so I want to get into this upcoming season now. You head into year three, as we mentioned. We know that, that for you, you have dunked more than just about anyone else in the country during the past two years. We know what you're capable on the defensive end. Probably, if not, the, I think you are the best defensive player in the country heading into next season. When you head into this year, I think the one aspect that people look at is saying, okay, we haven't seen much shooting from the three-point range, shooting too far outside. Now, you have dominated while not doing that, obviously, at the college level, but is expanding your range to a three-point shot? I know you have the capabilities of still doing that. Is this something that you plan to bring to the game more? Is that something you're working on? Do you plan on displaying that this season? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, that's something that I've been working on all summer. That's something that, you know, is now more natural for me. So, okay. yeah, that's something that will definitely be seen this next year a lot more consistently. So when you look at it, do you think we could expect more of just being a stretch five? I know as the NBA would probably say yeah. more so, or could we even see him running more of the four potentially, being a guy that really is a stretch it out, can use the ball at the perimeter, go attack the rim from the outside out, from the inside, from the outside in? It could be a mixture of all, honestly. You okay. know, um, I'm not going to just jack up threes, obviously. Sure. But it will be a part, you know, where a part of my game that I add that, you know, can be used as a weapon against other teams where they want to sag down low and you have that shot, right? hitting it consistently, now you really got to think. And if they step out, it's a blow by. So um, it's definitely something that I've added, and um, I'm very excited to be able to use it um, in the games coming up. So when you go look at last season, there was an A-10 player of the year, and obviously a lot of people thought Duran probably could have been it. Still was a great deserving job by Ace as well. But does that motivate you at all heading into next season now, knowing that, you know what, I believe I am probably should have won the award last year, that heading into this year I want to be the A-10 player of the year? Yeah, so like I said uh, earlier, with everything being expected, like I, I feel like just every game I'm dominating. You know, yeah. the re- the start the rest of the story will tell itself. You know, I I definitely feel like um, I'm gonna get that this year. Um, we we have the best team in the conference, so um, I'm just excited to be able to share that memory with them at the end of the season. So my goal is, whole goal is to just to win games and you know lock in from there, and then the rest will take care of itself. So you mentioned the best team in the A10. I think that's probably accurate. But how about the whole country? Because this is a team that, like I said, yeah, they have. You guys have one of the best players in the entire country in yourself. I think Malachi is probably one of the more underrated guards in the country. And the list goes on. Lots of other great players. How great can this team be this upcoming season? This team is going to be a, a very great team this season. We're going to surprise a lot of heads. You know, I always put this team over anybody. So um, mm. I'm just ready to go to war with them, honestly. So there's a little bit of a streak heading over, hanging over your guys' head. You guys haven't made the tournament since 2017. Now, granted. There also was a team that probably would have been a number one seed if not for COVID. So, I mean, yeah. I think it's kind of skipping a big thing there. We all know that that team could have maybe even won a national championship. However, though, the streak still is since 2017. Is this the year that, that streak gets snapped? It is the year that streak gets snapped. I definitely I definitely believe so. Absolutely. Well, for me, a few more things before I let you go, man. You look at just overall what you want to experience the next year. We know on the core and all, but like, what do you want to fully grasp? Because there's a chance, I think probably a highly likely chance that this might be your final year before you head off to the NBA. What all do you want to take in experience in this year? I just want to win, keep continue to win. Um, and I just want to continue to be a role model for not only like my teammates, but also for, you know, other kids looking up. So I just want to be able to make it to Mars Madness, you know, um, win and um, take care of what I need to take care of off the court as well, you know, and just do everything consistently and uh, efficiently. That's my whole goal. And it's not going to be easy, but, you know, it's poss- It's definitely um, capable, and we're going to be able to do it. So what do you have in your mind? Because when we talk about the NBA potential, is that something that you kind of have on your mind where you say, you know what, this is probably going to be a possibility of my last year here, and I want to go to the NBA next year? How do you 
kind of how, what's your mindset heading into that decision in about what eight months from now, whatever it is? Yeah, so I just feel like if we take care of everything we need to take care of, then all that stuff will be, you know, I'm not gonna say a piece of cake, but I feel like all that stuff will be there, you know, so it's mm-hmm. not gonna be going anywhere. And I know like I'm gonna be perfectly fine, you know. Yeah. I feel like if I have the right the tools right in front of me, all I gotta do is execute and do it, you know, and then everything else will be right there. Absolutely, man. Well, Duran, I appreciate you taking time to come on today, man. As you know, you're always welcome on. And truly, it was a blessing having you on here once again, bro. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Of course, man. You're always welcome on, man. God bless. God bless.